Welcome to Access to Perspectives Conversations, the podcast for bridging academic landscapes. At Access to Perspectives, we provide novel insights into the communication and management of research. Our goal is to equip researchers around the world with the skills and enthusiasm they need to pursue a successful career. You will get insights around the topics of scholarly reading, writing and publishing, career development, project management and research integrity, all embedded into open science practices. Learn more about our work at accesstoperspectives.org. Welcome back, Julie Wren. It's it's so uh, great to have you back on on record on the show, and also welcome to the family that is um, Access to Perspectives. We are all working together to provide the best possible services to researchers, librarians, and editorial like publishing editors. Um, yeah, welcome to the show again. Thank Thanks. you so much, Joe, for having me back. It's great to be part of this uh, wonderful collective that you've put together. And I'm really um, looking forward to sharing all my knowledge uh, with your audiences and helping them, or helping them, sorry, to uh, take a look at their health and well-being. Yes, and that's so important, as we all know. And we'll make sure that we equip everyone who's listening with some tips and tricks to look after ourselves so that we perform well in whatever we do, especially in academia, but also in other realms of our lives. And um, before we hit the record button for this session now, we had a quick conversation where I shared with you that there are times where I'm still excited about what I'm currently working on, but then sometimes it's just all over the place in my head. And I know how to, like I've learned, or I keep learning the hard way, sometimes not so hard, that it's important to get things out of your head onto paper, to get organized, to prioritize. We also talk about that in, in courses that we offer when it comes to project management, time planning, and those things. So I know the theory, and then it's just sometimes hard to put into practice. And to, so, um, but I know since you're the expert on, on <laughs> brain health and overall well being, um so what what can I do if I have this feeling of I don't know how to describe it, it's like eager eagerness, is that a word? Um, but then being haunted by it's just so kind of confusing at the moment in my head. Like where to get started and what, what can I do to hey. bring peace to my brain and to get back to productive yeah. mode. That's a really good question, Joe. And I think what I always advise people to do is to check in with yourself, is to do a body scan. It's like, you know, you're so busy. You've got all these things going on. Um, you're, you're using that big brain and you're thinking um, and you've got tons of projects and ideas running around there. But sometimes it's really important just to stop and to take a, a and do what we say, let's do a, a, a brain scan, if you like, of ourselves <laughs> or a body scan. So if you just like with me for a minute there, and perhaps those of you who are listening want to do the same, let's just take some nice, slow, deep breaths in, really taking it right down, pushing it down as you breathe in, into your stomach, blowing your stomach up as if it was a balloon, holding it and then slowly releasing it out. And squeeze your stomach muscles in. So you're pulling them towards your back. So you're pushing all of that air out. And take another nice deep breath in. We want to be breathing in positivity and clarity. And as we breathe out, let's breathe out that confusion, that noise that's going on in our heads. And just take a few more of those lovely deep breaths slowly and mindfully and then when you've done that let's start with the toes give them a little wiggle how are you feeling how are you sitting come up to your ankles is there any tension there have you been sitting at your desk for a long time move up to your calf muscles perhaps if you're sitting down give your legs a nice stretch under your desk out straight, move up to your knees, 
So if you have them bent for a very long time, up into your thighs and into your buttocks. Have a little wiggle on your seat from side to side. <laughs> Notice any tension in the lower back. Come up, bring your focus to your stomach. How's that feeling? Is there any rumbling going on? Any discomfort in that area? Another deep breath. Feel your lungs expand. Now come up to your heart center. Notice the beating of the heart. Does it feel rhythmic? Does it feel erratic? Spend a few moments there. You can even place your hand over your heart area. And then we come up into our throat area. How are we feeling there? Do we feel like we are, we've been talking such a lot? We don't know what to say. We're confused. We're blocked in this area. And then move up to your mouth, relax your jaw, unclench your teeth, notice your eye area, the tension behind the eyes, if you've been looking at the screen for too long. And then move up and just notice what's floating around inside your mind. And if you get distracted, just bring your focus back to your breathing. And finally, notice how the top of your head feels. Is there a tension in those flat muscles that covering your skull? Now I invite you just to be and to smile. As we smile, we can change the way we feel. Turn those mouths up at the corner into a beautiful smile. And just rest. Now gently open your eyes. How is that feeling? Because we're on Zoom, I can, I can see my face. And I was like looking into the almost greening. Smiley face. <laughs> and, but, okay. Yes. Oh, I'm very, very positive. I can make. Yeah. Well, that's just a little three minutes there that we did. It didn't take long, but we just checked in with ourselves and we checked in with our bodies. And that is such an important thing because, you know, the brain really needs oxygen. Mm. And the oxygen is not just, you know, giving us that sense of like expansion, but also when we're getting the blood pumping, that's bringing the oxygen round and it's bringing the nutrients with it. So that is one of the key things I think, you know, looking at, ha have I moved? Have I actually stood up from my desk? Have I been so into what I'm doing that I haven't noticed that I have been like focused? So that keeping that circulation going is really important. So again, I, I always say, ask yourself this question, how much am I moving? How much have I moved in the last hour? No. I mean, whatever technique you're using to do your study blocking, you know, at the end of that, it's important to literally to get up and move and to get that blood pumping. Mm -hmm. um, the same way with the breathing, because often we have a too shallow breath. Mm. And that's not clearing out. You know, I, I mean, I was talking about breathing out negativity and breathing in positivity, yeah. but that action of deeper breathing is super important for our brain health. Mm -hmm. So if we're just constantly this shallow, shallow, shallow breathing, we're not doing our brains any favors at all. Right. Okay. And again, you know, what could, what could I do right uh, to get the blood pumping? And again, something absolutely so simple, or maybe <laughs> people think I'm crazy, but just stand up and do some jumping jacks. Yeah, um, it's funny, but and... it's not crazy at all because you you already gave us all the right hints. It yeah. gets the blood pressure up. It it helps the uh, to nutrition mm -hmm. the oxygen oxygen and nutrients. And yeah, because often we focus so much on high blood pressure mm -hmm. 
being negative effect for our health but equally so you know low blood pressure as well is right. is important uh, to, to focus on you know if I, how do I feel I'm feeling cold am I feeling like my nose is cold my hands are cold you know maybe I'm just not getting that blood pumping around the body and, right. and because our brain is one of the heaviest organs it's also one of the most oxygen demanding or, organs as well mm-hmm. so just that simple act of checking in with yourself how am I feeling have I moved have I not moved how am I breathing can be already changed the way you feel and like we talked about before, I mean, if you have the opportunity just to go outside and take a 10 minute walk, but you do it perhaps in the opposite direction to what you normally do it in, that is also a great way to help the brain to look at things differently as well. And you can often perhaps see things that you've been struggling with in a different way. Yeah. So changing where you are physically can have a super positive effect on helping you work through some of those blocks. Okay. Wow, that's so useful. And also, I can testify to that. Two anecdotes of a myth. Yes, it's my show. (laughs) (laughs) It is your show. (laughs) No, but um, no, but just to add so and to support what you just said. Um, so the thing with oxygen in our body is when I did scuba driving and we were practicing in the pool, and like like one thing where you practice to keep your breath underwater. Mm-hmm. and to make sure that the body still has enough oxygen to source from even though you're not taking actual breaths mm-hmm. um, is to breathe out more than you breathe in to make sure that all the what is it that carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide yeah. and more oxygen gets in so that you basically um, fill up your resort your your battery your oxygen batteries so that you can and then also to signal the brain that actually there's enough oxygen so you don't have to signal that we not breathing so therefore we should breathe and get mm-hmm. up on the air again but to assure the oxygen uh, the brain that oh there's enough you mm-hmm. can stay down here for like a minute yeah. a minute and a half up to two and a half minutes this is what so, so, like anybody can train to achieve mm-hmm. the other thing is also Outside the water, um, when I take the dogs for a walk, it's like, I think that's also something that I haven't allowed myself as a as a researcher and then also later as an entrepreneur. It's like, I felt like, oh, I have to do this. So I have to get more work done before I allow myself a break. Yeah. And that's such a buttocks, excuse my English, mm-hmm. um, um, uh, attitude to ourselves because the breaks are actually part of progress and productivity and because it's during the breaks when i walk outside when i actually physically move that also my thoughts have an opportunity to move forward and Mm. then things fall into place in my head and i have a clear vision of what's next to be done yeah when i'm stuck to the screen and i just work away Mm. um it's like that's when we end up in a hamster wheel isn't it Mm. absolutely yeah so, yeah, I, I mean, I was talking to my niece recently who's been studying and studying. She thinks she started in November and she finished on the 29th of June. And we had a breakdown moment in the middle of that where she just couldn't anymore. And mm. I just said, to her, you know, you're pushing yourself really too hard mm. to the point where it was becoming unhealthy and a mental state, you know, and I, and I really feel for, for, for that, that age group as well, where they so much pressure to get you know, to get the grades, to get things done. But they don't have that education, if you like, about understanding it's okay to step away. It's not only okay, it's necessary. It is necessary, we're, yeah. Like we're but it's about giving yourself way. permission, isn't it? It's about giving yourself permission yeah. to somebody, someone like somebody, we go to school and we're told all the time that we need to study, 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 and you have to do your homework, has to be in by this date. Mm-hmm. And that freedom to allow yourself to be able to manage your time, I don't think that's, if I'm I maybe I'm wrong but I'm not sure that's taught so mm-hmm. when you move up into university level um I think you know maybe you're coming at it from a school mindset you know mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong here mm-hmm. because that's what I, I've witnessed yeah no, that's true. and you know that that giving yourself permission to actually manage your time in a healthy way I mean who teaches that to children yeah, I think you need really self-aware lecturers and teachers to be taught 
and there's not many who like I think most lecturers and teachers suffer from the same misconception about how we work in mm. Western society, so to say. I don't know. Well, where else it's spread? Yeah. Okay, but let's yeah, on a positive different. note. So yeah, we're all to... we're all very different. I mean, and when you want to look at also your brain health when you're studying like that, what are you eating? You know, what you're putting into you because your brain again is a very hungry organ. Now it loves glucose. Now I'm not giving everybody here the permission to go out and stuff <laughs> themselves with bags and bags of carbohydrates. Yeah, we all know the craving for chocolate and <laughs> sweets. Yeah. The the brain is running runs on glucose, but it can also run on something called ketones as well. Mm -hmm. And but, you know, putting your body into ketosis is not easy. Um, so the brain tend to pri privilege privileges that the, the take up of glucose. But there comes a point where if you're taking too many of the sugary carbs, too many of the wrong kinds of carbs, your brain becomes insulin resistant. So in fact, you're actually starving your brain of the fuel that it needs. Mm. So keeping your blood sugar balance is absolutely vital as well in terms of your brain health. So that's when you're saying nuts and fruits and veggies instead of sweets. I mean, anything that's, that's, that's refined sugar, white flour, you know, highly carbohydrate, it, it puts your body into like more of a, a flux, a roller coaster flux where you have these like huge peaks and troughs. You, you, perhaps you've known yourself, you know, you're absolutely ravenously hungry and you'll eat anything. And it doesn't matter what it is. You can eat a packet of biscuits or you could eat like uh, five sandwiches or something yeah. like that because you're not you're not keeping that fuel if you like for your brain and the rest of your body in a constant natural peak and ebb and flow with your your daily rhythms mm -hmm. so you know we're grabbing a, sa a sandwich or we're grabbing a, a chocolate bar to give us the energy to boost us up but that as i say that puts us into a state like almost like a pre-diabetic state where your body becomes insulin resistant and we need the insulin to be able to push the glucose into the cells mm. So if our brains are not listening to the insulin because, sorry, I can't hear you, you know, mm. because I've become in insulin resistant, then you start to have then the memory problems and then it leads on to more, more serious problems with the brain. But yeah. It's like keeping that brain fuel optimal and making the brain receptive to be able to take it up and actually use it for energy. Yeah, it's also what I've observed um, with myself and also colleagues when instead of like when you take energy drinks instead of and you just work too hard, you yeah. like you consume coffee, mm. energy yeah. drinks, whatnot, just to be able to keep going mm. to the level of exhausting ourselves. But then people just can't concentrate. You speak yeah. to them, it's like, what did you just say? So, excuse me, we have a meeting. Hello? Can you <laughs> listen? And then, no, they're actually not capable anymore mm. because not feeling the brain rights what i'm here from you yeah. huh. interesting so there's a few things there keep your blood sugar nice and balanced and that would be making sure that every meal you have some good quality protein um you're getting your vegetables you know you're getting your carbohydrates from vegetables uh from perhaps more dense carbohydrates so that they have more fiber in it and that helps keep your blood sugar balanced as well mm. So just a couple of tips there. I mean, it's, sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than that, depending on what's going on for you uh, as an individual. Yeah. So that's why in, in nutritional therapy, you know, it's all very much about uh, the individual and creating a, a personalized approach. Yeah, and then looking at the whole lifestyle and situation. People yeah. Are mm. right. And also finding things that fit in. Obviously, if you've got a very hectic lifestyle, like we've talked about before, is that how can I fit to these changes into that life? So mm -hmm. we're always looking for a way to make it work for every individual mm -hmm. by by through health coaching. Wow. So that's a teaser. <laughs> so we have <laughs> a few things cooking. Please we do. Uh, watch we do. Space. We'll <laughs> make some announcements in the next couple of weeks and months, or yeah, weeks, weeks really, and then throughout the next couple of months, you hear more from from us. But also, as always, we put Julie's contact details, her website and everything in the details. You can reach out to Julie directly. And um, we will, again, hear from us together. Thank you so much for these um, like vital tips. 
really. Um, um, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for sharing. Thank you so much, Joe. Looking forward to the new projects. Thanks for joining us to listen to this episode. Do let us know what you think. You can email us or connect with us on our social media channels, which you can find on our website at accesstoperspectives.org. Email us at info at accesstoperspectives.org or book a call to explore how we can support you with your research planning, management and publishing. Welcome you again soon for our next episode. Until then, have a great time.